what's up. So I've had a lot of requests to do a video on like passive income, how I got into it, what made me want to get into it, and all that good stuff. I don't know why I'm drinking this right now. I already have too much energy. So um, I've literally tried to film this video like five times. And I don't know why, but I keep like messing up. So I'm just going to film it and hope that it comes out well. If I mess up, try to ignore it, okay? So the information is still golden. So I'm going to start off with, you know, I started reading books. You can see it over here. Um, when I was in high school, and there was this one quote that stuck out to me. It was by Warren Buffett, the legend himself. And he said, uh, if you do not find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. And I was like, holy crap. I was like, dang, that's fire. I was like, I got to find some passive income. And then I saw someone had posted somewhere, I think. This also, like, literally as soon as I saw this quote, I had, like, memorized it. And it's always stuck with me. And I can quote it right on the spot. But basically, according to the IRS, the average millionaire has at least seven streams of passive income. And so then I was like, dang, I want to be a millionaire. I got to find me some passive income. And a lot of people have been like, yeah, what's... What's passive income like? Passive, the word passive, what is that? And basically, um, passive income versus earned income is passive income is you don't have to be there. It's not a hands on thing you've got to be doing to make money. Like right now, I'm sitting here recording this video, and there's probably people at my car wash washing their cars, vacuuming their cars, doing whatever, and I'm making money, but I'm sitting here doing a video. So I don't have to be there, I don't have employees. I just go there and take the trash out, do whatever at night. I'm there 20, 30 minutes. Um, so another thing is with earned income, it's kind of like if I'm sitting, if I'm working at an office from nine to five, five days a week, like I have to be in my office, be working and I'm getting paid by the hour. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, that's what earned income is. And then there's passive income and then there's portfolio income. And I think that's like stocks and stuff, but I really don't know anything about that. I don't really do stocks or anything like that. So I'm just going to stick to my passive income properties. Um, so one thing that I recommend people do kind of just to get you kick started is if you just sit down and you're like, okay, my rent every month is $600. My car payment is $300. Cable, internet is $150. You know, you add all that up and you're like, and I'm like, wow, like what can I do with like an extra $1,000 a month or an extra $200 a month? What would that replace? And so you just do the math. Like whenever you have a goal, just break it down and do the math on that. So like my goal is, you know, for me to replace all my bills with these passive income properties. So if my bills, if I sit down and my bills, groceries, everything adds up to $2,500 a month. Okay. Then I'm going to be like, how can I get a passive income asset that replaces that? And then let's say I work a job and I'm making $55,000 a year. Well, you need to sit down and think, okay, how can I go about getting these assets that will pay me, replace my salary? So you've replaced your bills. You found assets that have replaced your bills. Then you've gone out and you've replaced your salary. Now you're financially free. And then you can start doing this full time or you can go out there and flip real, uh, rentals, uh, flip whatever, uh, invest in real estate, however you want, do wholesaling full time. Who cares? You know, so that's kind of a really great goal to have. Just sit down and do the math and be like, okay, you know, how am I going to replace all of this and become financially free? That's kind of the end goal of this. Um, and then once you get that first passive income property, like it feels so good. And then not only does it feel so good and motivate you and give you momentum, but the first one makes the second one so much easier. And then the second one makes the third one so much easier and so on and so forth. And then you've just got all these streams coming in paying for this, paying for that, blah, blah, blah. You go spend $40 on dinner and you made $40 at your car wash while you were eating. Like it's wonderful. That's the best way to do it. Now, Robert Kiyosaki, I mean, he wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I do recommend all of you read. That's Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, but he also read, uh, wrote this book and I cannot remember what the name of it is, but he had like four quadrants in it. And I don't remember what was in it, but basically it was like, business owner um and then you had self-employed and then investor and the self-employed is like um, if you're a dentist and the dentist goes to peru for two months well when the dentist leaves 
they're the patients like they don't have a dentist so they have to shut the office down for two months you know they might could do cleanings or whatever but that dentist isn't making the money you know the doctor whenever he or she goes to peru for two months the patients can't be seen by the doctor so the, the doctor the dentist have to be there to be making money and that's what self-employed is i'm a realtor i'm self-employed um i probably could go to peru for two months i just have to pay someone to show my properties and i have to work from my laptop a lot probably be on the phone a lot it's possible for me but it'd be very very hard and i wouldn't be able to enjoy my time in peru i don't know why i said peru but um and then you've got business owner so you know um, maybe you own a little grocery store at the end of the street down here that does pretty well. Uh, you're still going to have to do inventory. You're going to have to do, you have to pay employees, deal with people, um, all that good stuff. So, you know, you could probably take off to Peru for two months and have a manager manage everything for you. Um, but at the end of the day, you still got to be pretty hands on. And he does a lot better job in his book explaining this than I do. Um, but I just kind of want you guys to get the point of what I'm saying. And then the, another thing in his quadrant was investor. And that's what he was saying you want to be. That's what I want to be. Investors are when you can leave, you know, uh, you've got rentals, you've got car wash, laundromat, storage units, you've got billboards, you've got that ice machine down the street whatever you're not losing a dime because you know you've got you're an investor you've invested in this you've put money in it whatever um and you don't have to be there for it to make you money that's passive income that's the beauty of passive income is i i can leave and i won't miss anything that was another robert kiyosaki quote was um i'm gonna butcher this but he said basically like you know you're really rich or like you're not really rich until you can leave the country for six months and not lose a dime. And I was like, whoa, that hit hard. Like, how can I leave the country for six months and not lose a dime? Like, that's impossible. But it's not with passive income. So, you know, that's why I'm so heavy on the passive income. That's why I think it is so important. Um, you know, it's just, it's just the way to go. It will make your life easier. And honestly, it is so rewarding, like, to know that, I'm sitting here, you know, if I wanted to leave today and go take a trip two hours away, go to a water park or something, like, I'm cool. Um, you know, my, my car wash is going to be making me money. What I do is when, if I if I did want to take, like, a weekend trip somewhere, I'll just slip a high school kid 20, 30, 40 bucks a day or whatever to take the trash out for me and wind the hoses back up. Like, it's so simple. So, um, you know, you can't beat passive income. That's kind of how I got into it. Um, but I also – got into it so young that I did not have a way to go out here and buy the properties. It's like, it's like, God, I'm so ambitious, but like, how am I going to get the money to do it? Like I'm over here watching my, um, well, I won't say any names, but I'm over here watching friends, parents, you know, buy up real estate and like flip it and do all this HGTV stuff. And I'm like, I want to do that. But it's like, I don't have, you know, 40 years of life savings to throw something in, throw money into this and then risk it. And like, if I risk it, I don't have any cushion left and they've got like a hundred K in the bank. They're fine. So it really sucked. It was so aggravating. And I was like, Oh, like how am I going to freaking do all this without any money? So I really had to sit down and get creative. And that's where I came up with the method. I'm not, if I went in depth with it, I would literally be on this video for like two and a half hours that's why I made the passive income blueprint. And the passive income blueprint is basically, uh, I don't know how many videos are in there, just some videos that um, show exactly A to Z how I did it. So if you're interested in that at all, just click the link in the bio. If not, I'm just going to briefly kind of tell you how I did it. So um, I did not get a loan from the bank. I didn't get a loan from the credit union. I didn't get a loan from some third party um website or any angel investors or venture capitalists i didn't do anything like that like whenever i say i didn't go get a loan people just start like wearing their brain out trying to figure out how i did that with some other people's money or something i didn't do any of that i just did creative financing so like that was it no one asked to see my credit no one asked to see what i had in my bank account no one asked me for a down payment no one asked me for anything. Like, I swear to you, 
I could have had a negative 800 credit score <laughs> and had 25 cents in my pocket, 25 cents to my name. Maybe I didn't have a car, didn't have a house, nothing. I could have walked up off the street with a quarter in my pocket and I still could have bought that car wash. And I know it sounds too good to be true, but that's how I did it. And it took me a long time to figure out how that was possible. Um, but then you've got your, your credit. Um, it doesn't get touched, which once you do this on one property, this allows you to go do it on the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth property. So like, let's pretend I do. Cause like you can go out here and buy passive income properties with a loan and a down payment. If you're set like that, you have that extra money, you have that good credit you want to go tie your money up. You can go do it today. Like that's cool. I'm speaking to the people who don't want to get their credit hit like that. And the reason you might not want to get your credit hit like that is because, um, Let's say I go out here and I buy, I get a loan for a $200,000 car wash. Well, now my credit has been severely hit. I'm taking out a loan for $200,000. My credit's going to take a hit on that. I mean, it could go up relatively fast, but it's still getting hit. And if you hit your credit, if I want to buy six car washes this year and I have to take loans out on all those, my, you know, my credit inquiry is going to be like hit six different times. And that's like way above average for a year, two year time span, like that's way too much. So it's just going to damage your credit. Um, so, you know, you want to go around that and that's where creative financing comes in. And then I didn't have 20% of $200,000 is what, like $20,000. So not everyone has that laying around to just throw in something. So um, in the passive income blueprint, I'm not really telling you how to invest in passive income or like giving you ideas. I am, but that's not the main point of it. I'm telling you more how to go about getting the, you know, getting the money for it, I guess, um, or going around having to get the money for it and going around having to get a loan from the bank. That's really the meat and potatoes of the passive income blueprint. Of course, I do give you ideas and stuff like that. Some passive income uh, ideas, you know, you've got car wash, laundromat, storage units, rentals are, but like you have to deal with people and right now is not a good time to buy rentals billboards, um, that ice machine down the street that I, I made a TikTok on the other day, but, um, just click the link in my bio or in my description rather, um, to check any of that out. I'm going to put the link in there with my social media channel, stuff like that. Um, so I hope that kind of gives you guys some background as to how I got into it and briefly described how I did it. Um, so I hope that helps. Thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video.